ice skating is one of them, but maybe axe throwing is one too. I don't know. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not a good mini golf player, but I love it. You know, my two year old isn't a good mini golf player yet. Uh, he probably will be by the time he's older, but, um, but you know, we still enjoy it, right? It's just, it's, it's silly. It's fun. It's as competitive as you want to make it. Right. And, um, now you have the golf, um, the mini golf going on, uh, and you have the, uh, it's also a bar and everything, but do you have, like, I know that there's some of the other bars around the area that have some games that are included as well. And I was wondering if you had those, because I, as I, as I stated earlier, I tried tennis and I know what you're saying about uh, PE being the bane of your existence. I actually, it was the bane of my existence and I actually ran track, but as I've said on this show a number of times, I was the Charlie Brown of the track team, but I was also a good recruiter of others that knew what they were doing. So we actually won our championship <laughs> I think three out of my four years because the high school itself was a three-year high school, but you could run in your senior year of your junior high year. So of my four years, I think we won our conference championship three years, but that's because I recruited people that I knew were good. My senior year, I might have also cost the championship because, uh, God rest his soul, I recruited somebody that I knew that I could beat, and we lost by like about two or three points, probably because I was tired of losing. So I recruited uh, my friend um, Jimmy uh, Jimmy Robinson because I knew that, uh, well, I can't talk now because I've got a little weight on me now, but at the time I was trimmer than him, and I knew that I was probably quicker than him. So I recruited somebody that I knew I could beat at least one. I should be ashamed <laughs> of myself for doing that, but I did do that. I recruited somebody that I knew I could beat in the, and we lost by like a few points. So uh, if I had recruited somebody else that was that was going to beat me, we probably could have won all four of my years. So I guess I have to take that uh, blame and just live with it for the entirety of my life. But as you can tell, I'm joking about it, so I must have got over it some kind of way. <laughs> but yeah. uh, there was, a, but I definitely know about that physical education, and I, and we did have P. As I remember correctly, it was a required course, and I want to say there might have even been some PE requirements at Marquette when I was there. I need to check with my friends that went to school there with me. I know we were definitely involved in some, you know, just pickup games and entrepreneurial stuff, and it may not have been a course requirement, but even if it wasn't, there was all that kind of recreational stuff going on. But uh, And during that time, I picked up an interest in games like air hockey and um of uh, foosball. So I know that I can sometimes be a master of those. And I know that there's at least one bar in the area that has that, even though I haven't attempted to play it over there, but I was wondering, are y'all incorporating any of that or are you just stri- strictly sticking to the bar and the mini golf or are there other games included too? So we have a patio uh, as part of our space at Bull City Mini. We have a patio. If you've been to a Bulls game, there's kind of a, you know, a concrete area between the Bulls side entrance and Bull City Mini, we have two garage doors that open up, and on nice nights and nice days, we've been fortunate to be able to open up onto the patio. And what we've done is we've astroturfed the the lawn, and uh, every day that we're open, we're open Thursday through Sunday from noon to 10 p.m., and then we're open on Wednesdays for private events and corporate events. But we bring really nice, like, outdoor patio furniture out, and we have a water table for kids and a sensory table uh, where they can like sift rocks. And our goal was to provide something for kids to do who maybe are too young to play mini golf or, you know, get bored after one or two holes uh, so that there's still something for them recreation wise. And uh, so far the water table and the sensory table have been a big hit. They were made by a, a local carpenter here and um, they are, I think make the parents happy because it means the parents can enjoy their drink and relax and it makes the kids happy. And then we also are using our patio for some other programming. So we had a we had Russell Favre trio. They're two thirds of Zoo Crew, if you know them. Um, they were out Sunday night, and we've had a DJ out. And so we'll be doing more programming like that on our patio. Maybe not uh, maybe not arcade games, but we are thinking about doing, you know, like ladder golf or uh, uh, other sort of outdoor patio type games. Uh, now that we have that space, if you've driven by, it's it's looking good. We've got like some temporary but season long fencing up to kind of keep it looking nice and contained. And then uh, you see us hauling the furniture in and out <laughs> every day we're open. Uh, yeah. So I, I anticipate doing more, you know, more reasons for people to kind of hang out outside and, and spend time together. Good. And one of the things I was going to ask you, you said that you were going to go from May to October, but we're in Durham and uh, yeah, we have winter. Yeah, we have fall but we don't really have winter and fall. So is there a reason that you won't go past October? Because sometimes November, December, even Christmas time, it's quite warm. So I I can even see mini golf being played in Durham in December and some of these other months that are 
yeah, they can get cold, but then they can also not get cold. So we have that kind of like crazy weather that it's not always as cold as we might think it would be in Durham, North Carolina. So have you thought about uh, extending it at, at all into the fall and winter months, and particularly the fall? Yeah, so Ben and I, as we've been researching this, we think that the only months that are, you know, predictably too cold in North Carolina for an outdoor mini golf course are January and February. In January and February, you know, it's predictably <laughs> cold here. But you're absolutely right. right. I mean, I remember a couple of years ago it was 70 degrees on Christmas Day. So, um, yeah, I think when we have a permanent course, we would be excited to be open, you know, 10 months out of the year at least. Um, we are – we have a six-month lease with American Tobacco Campus in the current space where we are, and uh, part of that is because you know we're we're in a basically we've turned a restaurant into a mini golf course, which has been super fun. But I'm sure um, I think there are better spaces for a permanent course. We'd love to have nine or 18 holes ultimately, so that we could um, have more Durham-themed holes. We want to have uh, you know an NC Central hole. We want to have uh, Gosh, a lemur hole. There are all kinds of ideas we have for additional Durham themes that we haven't represented yet. Uh, so ultimately, I think it's a space issue. We'd like to be in a permanent location or another location where we could build out build out the concept a little more. Um, but we are open to being open at least through the end of October if, if business supports it, and I, I hope it will. And definitely. It sounds like you're getting strong business support, even from the community and everything of that nature. Um, now, for the permanent location, do you have a time frame within your business plan as to where you're looking for a permanent location? And are you trying to stay in the downtown area? I know that can be hard with all the growth here, the gentrification that's going on here and stuff of that nature. But are you looking to stay in the downtown area or are you looking to like closer to South Point? There's all that space at Northgate because every time I turn around, because uh, one, <laughs> one of my other jobs is at Northgate and every time I turn around, something else is leaving there and everything. Matter of fact, you just gave me an idea. I'll have to ask them if they've thought about approaching y'all about that. But uh, And I'll mention what that idea is in, in a second. But um, have you looked at other locations? Or do you have any idea of are you just open to wherever it, it falls at? Or are y'all committed to being in the downtown area based on your mm -hmm. own interest and family and what y'all would like? You know, it's a good question. I think we're interested in being in Durham versus, you know, I, we're not – we haven't been looking at locations like in South Durham over by South Point, but, you know, Ben and I live in Northgate Park. So we, you know, we're a stone's throw from Northgate Mall and are watching closely to see what happens with it, you know, hopefully redevelopment because it's a great location and it seems like a lot of potential there. Um, and we've also talked to Downtown Durham Inc. about various locations that they came to some of our opening events and had some thoughts for us on additional locations. Um, we'd like to be somewhere central, uh, somewhere on the bus line, somewhere, walkable because more and more people are living downtown what i love about where we where we are now is you know we're we're near the bus line but we're also right there near hey Hay right there near central like people can walk okay. up uh from south side uh they can also walk down the hill from main street and all the new condos but it seems like every every day there's a new condo building popping up uh we like the idea of being in that kind of you know high traffic foot traffic uh you know downtown heartbeat uh, but there are a lot of places that that could include. Uh, it doesn't have to be American Tobacco Campus, although we certainly also are talking to American Tobacco Campus about what, what other possibilities on their property might might be a potential. So we're sort of open to all conversations, and I would just say, like, if, if folks are interested in, in having Bull City Mini um, reach out to me and Ben, we're, we're interested in having a conversation. And our goal is by the end of our – we're calling it an extended pop-up, right? It's a six-month. It's a longer-than-normal pop-up, but a six-month pop-up. At the end of our season in October, we'd like to be able to announce future plans or at least have a, a good idea of where we're going next because hopefully we will have built up a reputation and, a, you know, my goal is to be loved by the community. And hopefully people want to know, okay, well, where are you going next? Because we want to, we want to come back. We want to play. We want to make you part of our lives. And um, so that's my goal is by the end of the season to have, to have a better answer to that question, Mark. <laughs> No problem. That was a good answer, and I can definitely understand that. And um, as you were talking about being in Northgate Park, um, in addition to working at Haytai, I work in Measurement Incorporated, which is at Northgate oh, yeah. um, in, and has offices at Northgate. So I'm seeing every day the efforts to save the carousel. And as you were talking, I'm thinking about stuff. I'm like, oh, I can see a whole golf hole just around the carousel. <laughs> the Northgate Park carousel. Oh, man, that's a great one. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> Yeah, because they're, they're, they're about to pack it up. I think May 27th is its uh, last date. It's, it's, I think the 27th is the date it leaves. The 26th might be the last date. But, yeah, it's, uh, they've had people that have actually, I want to say they're doing, like, 
very cheap rides now because people are going there. And uh, I think the Bull City inflatables will still be out there in terms of like the little go-kart animals and everything. But in terms of the carousel, I believe it's supposed to be transported to wherever their storage unit is until they find a home for it. So who knows if there's a permanent location, it could be the permanent location for the uh, carousel as well. And I don't know, that's just a thought that popped in my head. You might try to get into conversations with them to see if that's even a possibility or like building a hole around the carousel. Oh my gosh. That's a great idea. Yeah. I'd love to talk to them. We're open to, you know, what we find is that people who love Durham and are committed to Durham and, and want to make Durham their permanent home like we do, um, they have all kinds of ideas for how to make this work and all kinds of ideas for, you know, bringing unusual things in, you know, the, the folks that run 11 foot you know, we're quick to donate this fun scrap metal art. And, you know, everyone has ideas for holes or ideas that we can incorporate more facets of the Durham community. And um, it's been really, really gratifying just to, to work alongside people who are so passionate about the place they live. I think that's really unusual um, that people are so committed to their city and committed to, you know, this, as I said it recently in, in an interview, I said, you know, this, this mini golf, full city mini, it's essentially been in my love letter to Durham. And so well, uh, we like the idea of adding more paragraphs to it. <laughs> definitely. And you're doing a good job of that. And one of the other things I was wondering is, and they're not in Durham, they're actually in Chapel Hill. <laughs> but when you talk about um, a recreational aspect tied into uh, the more adult kind of things with the bar and things of that nature. And of course, the stuff that parents can do and have something for all ages involved. Um, not just Palace Point, but I was just thinking about the fact that every Thursday I go to Carlboro to do my other radio show. And in going through Carlboro, I have to go through Chapel Hill um, when I do the mass transit thing. And going through Chapel Hill, I see that there's that organization called Cattails. And Cattails seems to be basically what you're talking about, only it's a petting zoo basically for cats. Because they literally they have cats that are there to be adopted, and um, you have to pay an admission fee to go to pet the cats and everything. But once you go there, and I think they're doing it in conjunction with the Goat House, which is in Hillsboro. But once you sign up and pet the cats and possibly even adopt the cats, they also have um, – I know they have natural drinks. I want to say they might even have some alcohol drinks as well. So you can actually um, you know, go out there even on a date and have some refreshments of uh, – human variety, particularly human uh, liquid refreshments, and um, also, I might say they, they have pastries too, I don't remember any full dinner dinners, but definitely you can have some human kind of engagement while also having stuff for the pets, because they also have stuff in terms of pet food and pet toys that you can give to the pets while you're interacting with them, but it's called Cattails, and it's right there on Franklin Street, and I think they're fairly new too, they may only be about a year and a half to two years old, and it's, the, it's apparently this is a trend around the country. There may even be a dog tail somewhere, but definitely cat tails in other cities as well. I know when I mentioned it to some friends of mine in New York and some of the bigger cities, they even some out of the West Coast, they knew what I was talking about. So apparently this is something that folks are doing in the pet industry. So it sounds like similar to what y'all are doing. So I don't know if you – doesn't sound like you've networked with them, but you might want to try to network with them as well. It's fast. I'm just looking at their website right now. It's fascinating. I'm more of a dog yeah. person, I must confess, but I like the idea. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm one of those people that's into all pets. I can do cats. I can do dogs. I've even had strange pets when I was little. Well, not little, but much younger than now, probably 10 or 15 years ago. I'm in my 50s now, so I guess that was when I was in my 40s, I had – because a friend of mine moved to New York to t pursue a job opportunity, I had a couple of pet um, geckos. So, I've, And as a kid, I had goats and rabbits and stuff that you would have in a country town. So uh, I've definitely covered the spectrum of pets. So definitely um, I do have an affinity for cats, but I also like you have an affinity for dogs. I think my brother's more of a dog person like you, just strictly dogs, but I have an affinity for all the animals. They don't always have an affinity for me because I'm also very busy. So sometimes – they're looking at me when I come back home as if to say, you're gone, we got revenge. So, you know, pets will let you know <laughs> if, you do not give, if you do not give them enough time, they will find a way to let you know. Oh, yeah, definitely. My poor dog, his name is Henry, and he definitely has been getting uh, a little less attention than normal as we've launched Bull City Mini, which we, we call our second child. We have a two-year-old, and then we have Bull City Mini. So the dog, unfortunately, and his needs have fallen a little lower on the totem pole. But, uh, but I know what you mean. And I can understand what you mean about the, having a child that is not necessarily a child, because one of the things that I know about entrepreneurship is that 
when I was in my teen years.